Today, I want to talk about some specific powerful antioxidants that have been shown in research studies to have an impact on bone. And there are some supplement products that go along with these, as usual, as the supplement industry would do. But the question is, is does the literature actually support using the products or should we be focusing on getting these things through diet? So I'm going to go through some of the research, some of the background. I'm going to talk about the product that's out there that's being marketed for bone health, specifically in this space. Uh, and then we'll come to a conclusion at the end on whether or not this is something that I would personally put into a program for my patients. All right, so the antioxidants that I'm talking about are in the group or family of carotenoids. So you probably heard of like beta carotene. So these are carotenoids and they're a group of antioxidants that are found in we're kind of various fruits and vegetables. We'll talk about some specific uh, foods here at the end. And the thought is, is that they may play a significant role in maintaining or potentially improving bone health. In fact, there's been some recent studies that have focused on the relationship between dietary intake of these specific carotenoids and bone mineral density, as well as even potentially reducing fracture risk. But I want to talk specifically about this one that's been brought up in the, I guess it would be the media, it could be social media, it could be advertisements, but this carotenoid called beta-cryptoxanthin, and we'll call it BCI for ease. But beta-cryptoxanthin or BCX had some recent studies that have been really talking about bone health and some companies have been using this as a marketing strategy to help push a supplement with beta-cryptoxanthin in it. So we actually pulled five different studies and I was going to review them individually, but I think I can just lump them all together because they kind of show the same thing. So what these studies did is to look at dietary patterns of specific populations. So some studies used serum levels of BCX, uh, other studies just used food frequency questionnaires and then sort of figured out who was a high consumer versus who was a lower consumer. And then they looked at bone mineral density and fracture risk. Now, four of these studies were done in an Asian country and one was done in England. They were all mostly done in coastal towns. So there's uh, potentially some bias here and we'll talk about that. But basically all of them found associations either with intake or serum levels with bone density and fracture risk. So you might think, that's awesome but we always have to take this into consideration of what are these studies actually saying, not let's just jump on the bandwagon of taking this thing. This is where nutrition literature often goes off the rails because an association is not causation. We need to understand what the other cofactors are. What are the other variables in this equation? So when I look at the marketing behind the supplement then that is offering beta-cryptoxanthin or BCX, do we have enough evidence based off of these studies to say that if you take the supplement, you're going to then see the same benefit of, of increasing in bone mineral density and a reduction in fracture risk? And the answer is no, we cannot make that leap. We can say that if you use a supplement to increase your serum levels, you might see the same benefit, but we definitely don't see that that's true always when you use a supplement to replace what's coming in from food. We have to consider that there are other potential confounders. When we look at these studies, we can see, like I said, that they are usually coastal. And so we're comparing a coastal population to a non-coastal population. There's going to be a difference there, likely in sun exposure, potentially other healthy user bias. If these people are consuming fruit that has this BCX in it, but the population that they're comparing them to doesn't have access to this fruit or isn't, you know, they're consuming a more of a highly processed food diet. There's so many variables there. We also have to consider that in Asian countries and in you know coastal towns, potentially even in England, you kind of get this blue zone effect. You guys have probably heard of the blue zones and how they're associated with longevity. And that's a whole conversation for another day. But there are some very consistent things in coastal areas, areas that are on the equator, areas that are close to the ocean that are going to continue to deliver some favorable lifestyle habits, I guess is a way to say it. So I always worry when we start looking at a specific population and then compare it to another population, even if it's controlled in some ways, that you're gonna be missing this confounders. Now, one thing to consider here is that if we are looking at these studies and we're saying, hey, these people that consume this particular uh, nutrient from food results in this thing, increase bone mineral density and reduce fracture risk, it is reasonable to say, hey, I bet if we consume more of these foods that we're gonna see that outcome. That's actually a much better result of these studies than is to say, let's take a supplement that has these things in it, because again, we can't take it out of the context of food because when you're eating it as a whole food, it's gonna have a different impact if you're taking it as a supplement. So. We're gonna talk about how to get it from diet. We're also gonna run through the supplement because there's some other interesting things in there. So we're gonna go through both of those things. But before we get there, 
If you're interested in learning more about how we create custom programs, including talking about supplements like this, then please consider our masterclass. If you haven't come to our masterclass yet, it's awesome. We do it about every other week, and I will walk you through how we create a program. I'll have a live Q&A at the end, and we'll deliver some resources about the, you know, what are the next things that you could potentially get into when it comes to learning about bone health and creating your own bone health program. So look for the link for that in the description on YouTube, or you can go to our website, optimalhumanhealth.com, and you can learn more about that there. All right, so let's start with the product. So this product is called Juveriente Bone Strength Complex, and I have no idea if I said that right. I have no association with this company. I have nothing to um, uh, disclose here, but I'm gonna walk you through what's in this product because it is, like it says, it's a complex. It's got a lot of stuff in it. So I'm just gonna list these off, and then I'm gonna go through each of these potential ingredients and talk about whether or not I think there's something that we should be using uh, or that I'm, I would wanna use for my patients. All right, so the ingredient starts with vitamin C, and this is in the form of ascorbic acid, it's a 50 milligram dose. There's D3, it's called a calciferol, at a 50 milligram dose, so that's 2,000 IU. They have vitamin K2 is MK7 at 180 micrograms, boron at 2 milligrams. Calcium is tricalcium phosphate at 1,000 milligrams. And then they talk about the phosphate part of the tricalcium phosphate at 455 milligrams, kind of a funny way to say it. And then they have the Satsuma mandarin orange extract at 100 milligrams. So that's the beta cryptoxanthin. So in general, when I look at a product like this, I like that it has a lot of different things in it. I'm always trying to stack as many things into as few capsules as possible. So I like that it has K2 as MK7. That's my preference. 180 mics, it's a pretty good dose. The boron, in my opinion, a little bit low. Adding two milligrams to some you know, dietary sources, maybe adequate. The D3, for me, probably a little bit high. I don't think we probably need that much D, but it's probably okay. I think we should be testing D to make sure that we know. That vitamin C as ascorbic acid in that dose, probably doing nothing for you and something we should be looking to get through diet anyway. The calcium is way too high. So we know that Osteoporosis is not, in general, a calcium deficiency. I also think that it's the wrong form. So when you take synthetic forms of calcium, like calcium triphosphate, it is going to cause a spike in blood calcium. If it's not coming from whole food forms of calcium, like either algae or ground up bones, you're gonna get this blood spike of calcium, and that has the potential consequences of causing calcification in areas where you don't want it. So I don't like this in this product. The orange extract, the Satsuma orange extract with the BCX in it, is this the right dose? No one knows, right? There's no way to know because there's no studies looking at this 100 milligram dose and what it does to serum levels. We have no idea. So if the, the basis of this product is you need 100 milligrams of this thing in order to get these serum levels, again, we really don't know. I'm sure they did some research to say, well, how much is in you know, a certain amount of the fruit and you know, how many of these fruits are people taking? Does it line up with the serum level? So I'm sure they did some math there. So again, these studies were looking at dietary intake. So I'm sure they did the math to say, well, if they consume this much fruit, according to their dietary record, that they had this serum level. So I bet there was some thought behind how they created the supplement, but there's really no studies saying they took 100 milligrams and it did this to their serum levels right? We don't know how that's going to work out because again, you're not consuming it in the whole food form. So we can't just say, well, if it, if the fruit has this much in it and we give this much in supplement, we're going to get the same impact. We don't, we don't know that. So I would say for something like this, and like I just said for vitamin C, these things are actually pretty easy to get through diet. Let's focus on getting them through diet because then we can take that literature that says when somebody consumes a lot of this, there is this impact, there's association. We can say, oh, cool, well, let's consume a lot of that and hopefully we'll get that same thing. We, kill, we still can't say that it's causation because it's not causation, but it is a strong association and then we're using the actual thing that it's associated with rather than a proxy of that thing. All right, so let's talk about some natural sources. I got 10 of them for you. So number one is papaya. Now, papaya is something that I think a lot of people really like. I'm personally not a fan, but I am a fan of the second one here, which is tangerines uh, or mandarins. So tangerines, relatively easy to get in, I would say, most of the United States. Same with the next one, which is oranges. So you kind of get the sense of like citrus fruit, right? So citrus fruits are going to have these things, and that's what they are in these Asian countries as well. There's also going to be beta cryptoxanthin in uh, red sweet peppers, pumpkin, corn, although I'm not a big advocate for corn in the U.S., paprika, carrots, again, there's that like yellow, orange vegetable, persimmons, butternut squash. So all of these things, you, you kind of get the sense. These are like the yellow, the yellow vegetables and uh, orange fruits that are going to have high amounts of these, you know, kind of beta carotene like substances, beta cryptoxanthins, these carotenoids. And so when you hear people talk about beta carotene, a lot of times the things that we're talking about, like carrots, it doesn't just have beta carotene. It actually has 
a lot of the, the different carotenoids in it. And this is just another one of those that happens to have uh, some association with osteoporosis and bone mineral density. All right, so in general, these five studies will show that the carotenoids potentially have benefit if consumed through food for bone mineral density and fracture risk. So that's a good thing. So I think let's try to consume them through food. It seems pretty reasonable. The supplement bone strength complex, it's only sold either on their website or on Amazon. And you've probably heard me say that I'm not a fan of buying supplements on Amazon because they just are not committed to storing them at the right temperature, making sure that they're turning over their inventory. And there are a lot of fraudulent companies that are selling products that have just been repackaged on Amazon. So I tell people not to buy supplements on Amazon, um, even if it looks like it's cheaper because you just don't know what you're getting. So I would recommend not using this, this product called Bone Strength Complex. Consider getting BCX through food just like you would do with vitamin C. The evidence really only supports the food intake as association, not a supplement as association with bone mineral density and fracture risk. So I hope that helps. Remember that osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is the beginning. I'll see you in the next video.